In this video, we're going to take a look at connecting uh, our ASP websites to a database. This is going to make them the most useful. So first thing I want to do is make my database. I'm going to use SQL, SQL Server Management Studio. And I'll get connected with my username and password. And find my database. And I'm going to create a new table. Now here I can design my table. Uh, this should look somewhat familiar if you uh, had the database class. Uh, I'm going to do a table all about um, state facts. So like, uh, you know, that Iowa, the capital is Des Moines, um, the state uh, bird and those kinds of things. Uh, so I want a unique identifier for those. So I'm going to have a state ID uh, and it's going to be an integer. And then I'm going to have the name. I want to know the postal code. needs to be two characters. And when you're making your uh, database, uh, your column names, make sure that you don't put spaces in there or any weird characters. So stick to letters, numbers, and the underscore pretty much. And the last thing I want to collect is state flower. And I don't care if bird and flower or null. I'll allow them to be null. Everything else I want filled in. This, I want it to be an auto incrementing integer. So if I select it up here and come down to identi identity specification, expand out is identity. I'm going to say yes. And it is the identity. Uh, it's going to start with one and it's going to increment by one. So I could change those to different values if I wanted to. And now that I've done that, the last thing I need to do is uh, set a primary key. And I have these values just opposite. I would definitely want the name, I definitely want the capital, and I definitely want the code. But it's okay if bird and flower are null. I'll allow them to be null. All right, I have my table made. I can save it up. Uh, and I'm going to call it state facts. And now if I look at my table, I can see it's in here. I actually want to change that name. I want to name that. Colbert State X. And I want to, this database is shared by everyone in your group. So for your individual uh, tables, make sure and just put your Hawk ID in front with an underscore and then the table name. And that way all of your tables are together with your Hawk ID. The next group members tables are all together with their Hawk ID. And then the stuff that you do for the library uh, will do SLPL, uh, South Liberty Public Library, and that will keep all the library tables together. Uh, therefore, if it's not your table, stay out of it. Okay, everything looks good. I'm going to add just a couple of facts in there so there's uh, information. So I'm going to edit the top 200 rows. And the state ID is going to automatically populate, so I can skip right over it. So I'll go with Alabama. And that capital is Montgomery. AL. The bird is the yellow hammer. The flower is the camellia. Okay. And then when I go to the second row, you can see that that integer fills in. So I'll come over here to state name and do the next one. Willow, 
Armagen. Forgive me not. And I could fill more in, but that's enough to, to make sure it was going to work. When I enter this in, it automatically goes into the database, so there's no saving or anything that I have to do. So now I've got a little bit of data in there I can work with. So now that I've got the database created, I want to open the website or create a new website. And I want to point it to the website uh, folder over here that I've got for Git that I'm managing with Git. Create a new website in the existing location. Okay. And I'm going to add a new file. The web form default is okay. And I've got the page in here. Okay, things look good. Okay, I can see the files in there. If I get status, I can see I need to add them. Okay, so everything's being tracked. So now I have my web page or my website created. I need to create a connection string that will point to that database I just created. I'm going to create that connection string in web config. And I'm going to put my connection strings right in here. And I'll put this info up on icon for you and you'll be able to uh, we'll go over it in class. So now that I have a connection string that connects my website to the database, I need to actually create a SQL data source and the SQL data source um, just uses that connection string to get to the database and then the SQL data source pulls the data out. So I can give it a better name if I would like. We use SQL for SQL data source. So now it's got a name. I need to configure it to pull the data I want it to pull. So I'll configure the data source. Here I'll find my connection string. And these are the fields that it's going to pull. I can pick them individually or I can pick just a few of them. You can see your SQL down here. I'm going to just select star. I'm going to test it. It's working. So now I have the data being returned to the page. I need to have a viewer or a way to look at it. I'm going to use a grid view. And I'm going to choose the SQL data source, SQL state facts. Save this up and I'm going to view it in the browser. And there it is. So what's occurring this page loads. When the page loads, this SQL data source goes to the connection string in web config. The connection string hooks it back to the database. And then this gets the data for us, the select star. Once it has the data back at this page, it needs a way to view it. So it puts it in grid view. If we look at the source of this, Here's the select command that's going to get our information. Select star from the state facts. I can do a few different things with it while it's in grid view. Make it a little wider. I can enable paging and enable sorting. And if I enable paging, I have page numbers down here. So after this fills up, if I have 100 records, it might display 20. And then I could click on page 2, and it would show me the next 20. Page 3 would throw, show me the third group of 20. 
and then sorting I can clip on I can click on these to sort them by either name or code or flower whatever I would like to do there I can also auto format so I can change the look of the grid view just by using the auto format the problem with this is you have to set every grid view using auto format and if you make a change you have to go revisit every single grid view and make the change so it's best to do uh, to apply the styling uh, using a style sheet like we were doing uh, in the last assignment I've got this data coming back if I would like to edit it or delete it I can do that from here in grid view but I have to enable the SQL data source uh, to do the editing and the deleting. So if I get back in to configure the data source, my connection string is still selected. I will choose advanced and generate insert update and delete statements. Now, if you come in here and this is grayed out and you can't click on it, you haven't specified a primary key in your database. As soon as you specify the primary key, this becomes available. I'll next and finish. And now when I go into the grid view options, I can edit and I can delete. Now when I view this in my browser, I've got some other options here. I can sort it by state code or by state name. I can edit. I can delete. So I've added a few more records to the database and I wanted to show you this paging. You can control how many records are shown on the page. If I highlight the grid view and come over to the page size property, I can see it's going to show 10 records before it generates the second page. I could shrink that to five records. And when I do, I can see only five are displayed, and then I click page two to show the next records. If you don't like scrolling, or if it is in the best interest of the user, you could set this to a very large number. And now they'll all be displayed. The other thing that I can do are change these names and hide certain fields. So these are not user friendly and we don't really need to see state ID. That's a little confusing. So if I come back to grid view, I can edit the columns. So this command field refers to the edit and the delete. So I don't really want to mess with that, but I don't care to see state ID that's not useful to the user and these are not good names so I can highlight this the header text And now I can see it's a little more user friendly. And if I save it up and view it in the browser, it looks a little better. I can also drag this wider. I can also drag this wider 